reflections on the West, excuse me, the Belgian Confession of Faith. Uh, we're looking at Article Number 27, which is on the Catholic Church. So we'll uh, take a look at that word today. We'll be able to cover the entire article this morning. It reads as follows: We believe and profess one Catholic or Universal Church, which is a holy congregation and assembly of the true Christian believers who expect their entire salvation in Jesus Christ, are washed by His blood, and are sanctified and sealed by the Holy Spirit. This church has existed from the beginning of the world, and will be to the end, for Christ is an eternal King, who cannot be without subjects. This holy church is preserved by God against the fury of the whole world, although for a while it may look very small and as extinct in the eyes of man. Thus, during the perilous reign of Ahab, the Lord kept for himself 7,000 persons who had not bowed their knees to Baal. Moreover, this holy church is not confined or limited to one particular place or to certain persons, but is spread and dispersed throughout the entire world. However, it is joined and united with heart and will in one and the same spirit by the power of faith. clearly see that in this article of the Belgian Confession of Faith that they are responding to the uh, claim made by the Roman Catholic Church to be the one institutional church of the Lord Jesus Christ that has its origins back into the early centuries of the church. And so by this institutional connection that Rome claimed with the early apostles, with Peter, as it were, being the first uh, pope for the church, um, Rome makes a very powerful, historical, institutional claim of being the church. And so when the reformers were driven out of the church or broke free from the church and formed their Protestant churches that created an issue for them, are they a part of the Catholic church? Are they members of the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ? And so the argument would go back and forth between the Reformers and the Romanists as to what is the nature of the true Church of Christ. Is it revealed merely in its institutional form and its historical connections? If that is so, then perhaps Rome has a claim. But in fact, the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a spiritual body that transcends any one particular uh, nation, or any particular language group, or anything like that, it is the spiritual kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's rooted in faith in Christ, and the salvation that He provides. And so if you have a situation in which the institutional church has drifted away from the message of the gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ and in Him alone, if that institution begins to draw away from that gospel message, then it's the institutional church that has broken away from the Catholic Church. That is where the true separation comes. And so what the Reformers were saying is that we are the one true Catholic Church that has continued through time and that we are joined to the one body of Christ that is not bound by any particular institution or nation. The church does have its formal, visible, institutional aspects to it, but they are not essential to the existence of the church. You might recall that God himself left the nation of Israel, the uh, people of God under the old covenant period of time, with the exile that God brought in the time uh, of well, 586 B.C., uh, Israel was driven out of the land, and God himself left. Ezekiel has this vision of God in the glory cloud, leaving the temple in Jerusalem, leaving Jerusalem itself and going away. God himself left his people. He 
because of their sin, their idolatry, their wickedness. And so God was one who was a separatist, if you will, one who left the Roman church, or the, the, the Judean church of the old covenant period of time. He really didn't leave his people, he left that institution of Judaism with its temple of that day. The reformers then are those who in faithfulness to Christ would not continue bound by the institution of the Roman church. This is something that has to occur from time to time in the course of history. In the mainline Presbyterian church, the Orthodox Presbyterian church left the mainline church, the PC USA, because it has de departed from true Christian faith. It has abandoned a different religion. It, excuse me, it has adopted a different religion, uh, the religion of religious humanism. And so the Orthodox Presbyterian Church separated itself from the uh, mainline Presbyterian Church, and that continues in other groups and denominations as well. The church is a dynamic, if you will, dynamic institution. Faithfulness to Christ is more important than faithfulness to an institution. And so the church is uh, the, the assembly of true Christian believers who have their salvation in Christ and in Him alone. The article says that the church has existed from the beginning of the world and will be to the end. Here we might see an, an apologetic against the word um, the Anabaptists were the more uh, uh, dispensational folks that we have today, where there is a sense that the church was established in the new covenant period of time at Pentecost, and that's when the church had its beginning. The confession, the Belgian confession, says that the church had its origins right from the very start, when Adam and Eve received the promise of God that the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. And then you have developing from there uh, two families, the family of Cain and the family of Seth. The family of Seth calls upon the name of the Lord, whereas the family of Cain, the unbelieving group, go on in their pagan wickedness. We go to the point where we have Noah calling upon the Lord, and he is spared the judgment that comes on the rest of the world. There is always a people of God in the world. And the confession boots that in the eternal kingship of Christ who cannot be without subjects. Christ is king in the old and new covenants alike. The Apostle Paul said that the gospel was preached to Abraham. Jesus himself said, before Abraham was born, I am. And Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. The old covenant believer believed in the promises of God. And by faith, they were joined to the same Christ, to the same church as we are joined to today. We are one people of God throughout the history of the world. And so we stand opposed to those views which say that the church uh, was a, a kind of afterthought after Israel rejected the offer of a kingdom. Uh, then God has this parenthesis period of time in which the church now uh, occupies a place in the world. Uh, that is contrary to what the scriptures teach us. We are one people of God, one Catholic church, beginning in the Old Covenant and on through until the end of the age. Um, the final portion of the uh, article notes that the uh, Reformed Church is a very small church and extinct, almost, it would appear to be extinct. The, the true church is a church which confesses Christ, and at times it is a persecuted church. It is driven out. You hear uh, of the great persecution that is occurring in Nigeria and in Iraq and in other places around the world where believers in Christ are being, if you will, exterminated from these communities, from these nations. And you wonder, what is happening? Will the church suffer a complete collapse? Christ assures us that he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so he has his own purposes in mind through all of these many things. But this kingdom will spread throughout all the earth and he will be glorified in it. 
And so the true Catholic Church is joined and united with the Lord and will in one and the same spirit by the power of faith.